Well, hey guys. So we're going to sort of uh, continue on with, um, you know, moving on with the photography and various ways of presenting it. Um, one fun sort of trend that's been coming out are these sort of geometric kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, collage patterns. And we've got one way of creating little collages with uh, the idea of just laying them out and just having them kind of uh, presented in a real, you know, a, a simple way. And this right here is just a series of um, pictures I've taken of my son over the course of his life. He's about three years old now. I think the most recent one is the one in the center and the probably the earliest one or like, you know, one that's at the top and stuff. And in, in between, you know, it's sort of very various pictures throughout, you know, like two, two three years or so. And uh, along with the uh, members of his family and stuff. So we're just going to be using pictures that we've been taking. Obviously, this is just stuff that I had on this computer just to show as an example. And we're going to be using both Illustrator to create this little framework here. And just the idea of this little thing. If, if you're not really familiar with what this is supposed to represent, it's supposed to represent the sort of aperture, the shutter on, uh, on, on your uh, camera. It has these little blades that kind of uh, retract in and retract tracked out and sort of been the, the kind of classic way of uh, getting the most even sort of spread of light uh, across your um, uh, across your exposure whenever you're using a, a camera instead of it being just like a, a straight shutter down and uh, up and down so the, the aperture kind of looks like this and so you can actually control that that's the sort of uh, diagram you see in the back of your camera whenever you change the f-stop so um, just uh, kind of putting that aside let's go ahead and open up illustrator um, and we're going to want a uh, square canvas and so I just had one in mind that's going to be at 1000 by 1000 pixels um, that's going to be you know it's I think it's like 72 pixels per inch um, but uh, whichever you choose just go ahead and create the square image that's you can see that this is the sort of final product we're going for I'll just show you how to create this real quick um, so uh, in my properties just want to make sure that your stroke is on um, when you click on your shape tool so let's go ahead and click on polygon tool so the stroke's going to be on for now, and um, we're just going to create a uh, polygon. I'll hold down shift while I create this, and uh, you can make it, you know, as big as you want, but um, uh, I'm just going to make it, I would say, let's look here. It looks like it's about, about um, 160 pixels high, about 180 some odd pixels tall, and I'm going to get my align um, window up. If you don't see that, you can go to window, uh, align. And let's just make our stroke a bit bigger, maybe like three points or so. If I were to change this to pixels, uh, it would probably be somewhere around like, like, you know, maybe 12 pixels or something like that, maybe like, like 20 some odd pixels. Um, but uh, make sure that when you have your align tool up, um, if you if you like you don't see what I see if you if you don't see they say show options so you can um, click on align to artboard and you can just put that right in the center of the artboard uh, and then we're gonna grab uh, instead of our uh, uh, polygon tool we'll grab our ellipse tool and um, we'll draw a circle here let me just draw a circle it's a bit bigger than the polygon is here I'm gonna take my fill off for both make sure the fills off for both here. And uh, fill off, and we'll just center them both into the artboard. So center them both here, all right. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll create the sort of shutter blades by using our line segment tool. Our line segment tool is very um, uh, easy to use. Just uh, start at the you know corner of your polygon there, and I'll start off with the kind of uh, horizontal lines here. Just have them go opposite directions. Um, one on the top, one on the bottom, uh, and then with uh, the next one, basically what we'll do is we'll just sort of um, intersect these here uh, and sort of follow along with the line. If you want, what you can do is you can sort of like click on uh, that and sort of it'll snap to this line here, and then when you get your move tool, just pressing V on the keyboard here, um, you can actually extend that out and it'll follow along with it. If, uh, you know, it'll give you a little smart guide there if smart guides are turned on, and you can match that right up with the... Um, in there. This doesn't look like it's quite lined up right. Let me make sure that's uh, yeah. Can I get in there a little closer and nudge them down a little bit? I'll press down on the keyboard there just to get it right. Looks about right. Let's see if I can't pull this down some. So it intersects. And stick out. If a little, little bit here there's not going to be a big deal because it's going to be kind of small in comparison to the rest of it. Um, Alright. Let's get this lined up here uh, and then we'll do the same thing for the other sides in fact what I could do here is I could just take this and alt drag it up here and have that be there and then I can just uh, should move it over so it lines up looks good maybe 
Over one, and then I'll uh, right click on this. Oops, let me double click. Right click on this, transform, reflect, and I'll copy it. So I can take this and sort of drag it up this way. And then uh, I'll drag this down. Oops. To where it matches up here. So nudge that over a little bit. And I'll nudge this one over here. You want to avoid where this sort of makes the sort of border between the two. You want to avoid that, that um, distracting thickness. That's one of the elements of design is the line, the consistency of our line. All right, and so I'll just um, gonna have that, and I can uh, take my direct select tool here and sort of draw this back up to the edge of the artboard. Well, it really doesn't matter, but just for simplicity's sake, if you want to do that, you can. Intersect there. Um, okay, and so with that done, um, we'll just kind of leave that. We don't have to have to save this. We can just leave this the way it is. Um, okay, so here's my Photoshop file. It's finished. I'll just show you how I, how I started this up. Um, let's go ahead and make a new file. And um, your file, whatever it is you're going to be doing, is going to be, you know, uh, square. So if uh, you go over to Photo, it'll give you a good preset to start off with. Um, you want it to be pretty high in resolution because we're using pictures here. And uh, 7 um, by 7 or seven by four, 5 by 5, whatever it is you want to do, you want to do a square. So whatever it is you do, um, just make sure that it's, it's uh, the same width as it is the height. Um, I'll go ahead and save this file. So, interesting. Save as, uh, and we'll just save this as uh, say collage uh, shutter, right? It's just so we have that there. And um, what we'll do is I'll just paste. What we'll do? Is, well, let's we'll go over here to um, Illustrator. Get our select tool. Select everything. Copy it, and then go over here to our Photoshop document and paste. And edit. Let me try one more time. Edit copy and paste and this will come up as uh, pixels smart objects let's go ahead and choose pixels and um, it should be just about the same size as your uh, canvas but if not we're just uh, we want to make sure this extends past the uh, the canvas here so I'm gonna hold down shift and alt to keep it centered and I'll uh, I'll just make it just a slight bit bigger in the artboard itself, right? Just so it's uh, it's extending back onto the onto the black, and you'll see why in a second. Um, okay, <clears throat> so the easiest way of uh, kind of getting this effect here is to use layer masks. So we'll go ahead and um, bring in our first picture. I'll just I'll just grab a picture here that I have. Uh, I'll just use a random picture that I find. This one's good. I'll just drag it in. And you want it to be below your um, shutter kind of design here. So let me just uh, pull this down. This is my little sister Sarah. Uh, and I'll just sort of drag this down to where it fits in to say this big shape here on the edge. And I'll just work my way inward. And I'll just show this to you a couple times. Uh, and, then, um, and then I'll kind of move on here. Let's see. Maybe this would work better down here. You want to, you want to keep in mind what kind of shape you're working with because some of these things are longer than others. Uh, just based on the angle that they started off with. So this probably works better on the bottom corner just because uh, the camera was sort of like, you know, a, a more of a landscape, you know, position there just in terms of what's what's being seen. Um, okay, so once that's in position, obviously, you know, keeping in mind the lines of your of your uh, uh, little uh, skeleton here, um, get your direct, get your magic wand tool that looks over here, magic wand. If you hold this down, you see quick selection, just magic wand. If you don't see what I'm talking about, just press W on the keyboard. So say for instance, I have my move tool. W on the keyboard, it'll select the magic wand tool or this quick selection. So with the magic wand tool selected, I can click inside um, this little area here. And you've got two options. The easiest option would just be to go down here and click on layer mask. And then I'll just mask off everything outside that selection. And uh, I'll show that to you one more time, and then I'll, uh, maybe, maybe a couple more times, and then um, uh, I'll explain what we'll do once we uh, once we get in here, so I'll just drag this one in. Here, this is a good one because it's more like upright. Um, so obviously, one that where the subject is a little more uh, fitting to the various uh, you know kind of areas here would, would be apropos. So I'll just uh, pull this down here, move it down a little bit, and what we'll do is we'll go over here, W click, and once again hit our layer mask. 
And uh, there's that. Okay. Uh, so let me just do one quick more, and then we'll uh, I'll explain what we'll do with that little skeleton there. Um, so let me just get one more here. I'll just grab this one of him and his great grandmother. And I'll make this one tiny so it fits inside this inner circle here. And um, so let's drag this in here. So obviously you're going to be using the picture that you've been taking. So hopefully you like the pictures you took. Uh, and we'll just you see, kind of pick the six best or the seven or the, the 13 best pictures here. Once again, hit that. Now the reason why I'm showing you these, even though I'm doing the same thing over and over again, is because I wanted to explain, at one point we want to make sure that this, uh, this little uh, thing turns white. Right now they're black. We could do a couple things, obviously. We could make it white inside Illustrator if we wanted to. But uh, it's real simple just to click on that layer and go to Image, Adjustments, and then Invert. Uh, now that makes it disappear over here, but um, if I were to say, for instance, add like, you know, kind of a gray background here. And you can kind of see that what's going on there. And it, would, it helps separate these things and it shows a bit better, especially if your pictures are dark, um, like some of mine are. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go over here to this um, uh, collage that I have over here. I want to do a couple things to this uh, before <clears throat> before I keep going. Let me just, um, so just sort of, you can sort of see that each one of these things is um, kind of like sitting there uh, obscuring various uh, various parts of the image and stuff. So you're going to end up with something like this. Um, so obviously populate your, um, your, your collage and then come back to this video here. And um, the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click on one of these layers up here and just click over here where it says uh, adjustment layer down here. Create new fill or adjustment layer. So click on that and um, choose curves and um, if you recall the curves this is the rgb curve we can sort of like you know kind of intensify the colors or we can kind of bring the you know highlights up so over here we've got the highlights over here we've got the shadows and inside we've got the midtones and that's that's you know one way of, of, of doing it um, but um, instead of doing that let's just look through the little options here this is this selects all of the colors here so we can make the shadows a little more intense and the highlights a little more bright um, but instead of doing that, I'm going to do something with the red by itself. So I'm going to make the reds a little less intense on the shadows, so everything gets a little cooler. But I'm going to make the, the red a little bit more intense on the highlights, just slightly. So we can kind of see it kind of cools and it warms, sort of evens up the temperature a little bit uh, all, all, all the way through. Uh, and then I'm going to go down to green. I think I might just do the same thing. I'll just drag that down slightly on the green. Just pull the green down a little bit. And then I'll pull the green up a little bit on the highlights just to kind of even that out. And then what we'll do is we'll go to blue and we'll do the opposite. We're going to pull the blue up in the shadows and then down in the highlights. So that kind of makes this, this interesting little effect. Cools everything down a little bit just to kind of pull the reds down and then the blues up. Uh, kind of a sort of an inverse in a way there. And uh, <clears throat> the last thing we'll do is we're going to add some texture to it. Now in your D2L Dropbox, you should see this these little textures here. We've got a dust and scratches texture and a grunge texture. So I'm going to grab my grunge texture here and I'm going to pull that in. And it's not quite as big. There's this little gray spot down here. So I'm just going to just resize this. It doesn't really matter if it's to scale or not. And uh, then I'm going to go over here to where we see normal. So um, it's the uh, blending mode. Click on normal and click on screen, which is going to basically make all the uh, uh, sort of uh, dark uh, blacks disappear. And then I'm just going to reduce the opacity, say like maybe 20% or so. So, so basically just adds a bit of a texture, you know, kind of a grungy sort of scratched up kind of looking texture to it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with a dip with the, with the other uh, layer here, but I'm dust and scratches. I'm just going to drag that in and we'll just lay that right on top. And once again, I'll sort of expand it out to make it fit. And once again, we'll add the blending mode screen. And then we'll just reduce the opacity to maybe like 50% or so. And that just kind of gives us a fun little look there. All right, good. Uh, and obviously, if you want to adjust that, that's uh, that's fine too. Uh, I might even go back to my curves layer here and um, go back to my curves here. Just sort of go back to my blues. Maybe make my blues a little more intense. Uh, less intense in the shadows. Little highlights right there. Depends on what you want. 
Tag. Get yourself a little bit more. More health. That looks fun. Kind of gives it a little bit of a, a kind of a uh, abstract feel to it. Um, okay, and so uh, go ahead and say this is a JPEG. Um, and if you want to put, like, you'll say a watermark down here somewhere, like maybe, for instance, uh, down here, I'll just get my text tool and just sort of photos by Mr. Lovello uh, or whatever kind of logo you might want to make for yourself. I might choose a different font here. Say, for instance, the script font that'd be fun. I mean, the script font, I think I was using all caps, but I mean, let me look. I got to. And I'll just uh, reduce the opacity of this layer just to make it not stick out quite so much. Just be like 10%. I'll pull it down here so it's off out of the way. Oh. All right, there you go. And so just uh, export this as a JPEG. Uh, save it as a JPEG, and then uh, you can turn in um, to D12. Very cool. Uh, can't wait to see you guys produce. See you in class.